Yo, what's going on, guys? Tan my ear for simple snippets, and welcome back to another video tutorial on data structures and algorithms. And today's topic is going to be searching algorithms, especially the sequential search. Before we start off with the topic, a quick note: I have a complete data structures and algorithms playlist. If you are new on this channel, if you are watching this video for the first time, check out this entire playlist. There are a lot of topics covered under data structures and algorithms, and more are frequently added from time to time. And also, if you are new, please do subscribe on this channel. It helps a lot. and with that being said let's get started so coming to searching algorithms as the name suggest searching algorithms are designed to check for a element or retrieve an element from any data structure okay now we already know we have many different types of data structures we have heap we have stack we have queue we have linked list and what not so depending upon what data structure is being used the searching algorithms also differ in terms of how they operate okay now generally based on the type of search operation these algorithms are classified into two categories the first is sequential search which we are going to be looking at and the second one is interval search so in sequential search as the name suggest the list or array is traversed sequentially and every element is checked now as the name suggest obviously when we have multiple data structures with different types we will be storing some elements in those data structures in in that format right so when it comes to searching what we are going to do is we are looking for a particular element in that data structure so as you can see right now from the diagram we have a array data structure we have five elements 55 62 7 11 and 173 right so when it comes to sequential search let's say we want to search for the element 7 so in sequential search what we will do is we will start off from one end of the array so let's say we are starting off with the zero index we will access this position we will check if 7 equal to 55 it is not equal right then we will move on to the next element so now we are accessing the second element we will check whether 7 equal to 62 it's not equal right then we will move on to the next one and at the third location we are getting 7 equal to 7 and once we find that element we will print the appropriate message and in case we do not find that element at all let's see we are searching for some random number 73 now 73 is not there in the list right so we will traverse the entire array starting from one end we can also start from the index position 4 and move on backwards it's going it's not going to have any effect but once we completely traverse it and do not find the match we will print a message that we did not find that element so this is basically sequential search and it is not really efficient enough because you can see as the number of elements in the array or list would increase the iterations will also increase right let's say we have an array of 100 elements and the element that we want is at the end and if we start from the zeroth element then we will have to traverse 99 times till we reach the our final output or final element right so it becomes time consuming when the number of elements increase and it's not really used all the times the example of sequential search is actually linear search so we are going to be looking at linear search today the other type is interval search we will discuss in detail the different types of interval search algorithms also as we move ahead but essentially what it does is unlike sequential search these algorithms usually work on sorted data structures so here you can see the same array but here the numbers are sorted in ascending order we have 7 then we have 11 55 62 and 173 in ascending order in the increasing order right so these interval search algorithms specifically work on such arrays or data structures only wherein the elements are ordered in a particular fashion and these type of algorithms are much more efficient than linear search as they repeatedly target the center of the structure and divide the search space in half or essentially they do not traverse every element you know let's say you want to search for 62 62 is over here right so an example of interval search would be binary search and what this algorithm does is it divides the array in half every time and searches in that half array so for the first time what would happen is just to give you a small example this would be the first part of the array and this would be the second part of the array so in the first step what will happen we will have two sub arrays and since this is arranged in a particular order in ascending order we can check the starting and the ending position right so this is the start element s1 and end element e1 for this sub array and this is the start element and this is the end element for this second sub array right so we can check these individual values and we know that 62 is greater than 55 so once we know this we know that 62 is not present in this sub array right so we will not search in this entire sub array we will directly search in this sub array 
and then the process will go on till we actually reach our output or element of course we will discuss this in detail binary search in the next video or in upcoming videos right now let's just focus on sequential search so let's see in detail a type of sequential search that is linear search algorithm okay so in linear search what we do is we take the input array so we are going to be applying linear search on array data structure for simplicity purpose but linear search can also work on link link list or queue or stack wherever there is a sequential way of storing data you know so the step number one is take input array from user so let's assume this is the input array that the user has entered we have five elements and they are not really in any order so linear search can work on unordered list also the second step is take elements you want to search so let's say user wants to search a value of 11 okay so we'll start from the first element of the array to the last you can also go in reverse order if match found then print the message and stop the process else move to the next element in the array so this is a very basic algorithm which is written in pseudo code kind of language and we will also see the programming part we will convert this algorithm into c++ programming and implement this search algorithm also but we will first start we will go to the first element check if 11 equal to 55 no right then we will move on to the next and then we will move on to the next and this step number four will keep on executing till we find the match so once we find the match we will just print a message that match found and if we traverse the entire array and do not find a match we will just print a message that we did not find that particular element okay so this is a very basic linear search algorithm and let's go ahead and quickly implement this in a C++ program so that both theory and practical will be covered. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, I have my basic C++ programming structure and I'm using Dave C++, you can also use any other ID. You just need to know the algorithm and then the syntax is the only thing that matters. In fact, if you're using any other programming language, even that will do Java, Python or any other general purpose programming language, but we are going to be using C++ programming. So let's get started. Let's create an array for simplicity purpose. We will hard code the values. Now what we will do is we will ask the user. Please enter an element to search. Now remember we are using an integer array. It can also be of any other data type. It can be double float. In fact, it can even be a complex data type if you're using classes or if you're cre creating your user defined class. I'm going to say int num. Okay. We will take this integer from user. And what we will do is let's create a user defined function over here. I hope you know the concept of functions. I have a complete C++ tutorial playlist. If you're confused, you can go check that entire playlist out. I'll drop the link in the video description. So I'm going to say void linear search okay inside this we will pass an integer array and we will also pass the number that the user passes okay so whatever number we are taking here as num we will pass it over here we will say linear search arr comma num okay so we are passing arguments in this user defined function that we are creating over here it accepts an array so this is how you pass an array as argument and this is the number that we're taking in from the user which you want to search in this array. Okay. So now the real implementation or the real algorithm will be working or will be implemented inside this function. So let's do that. So first things first we will create a temporary variable in temp equals to minus one and assign minus one to it. I'll tell you why we do that. Next thing what we will do is we'll say for int i equals to zero i less than phi and i plus plus now since we've hard coded the size of the array and we know that the size of the array is phi we are going to loop through the entire array right we have to search each and every element so we will start from zero index and we will go till four array index starts from zero to four right so that's why i is less than phi now here if we say if a of i equal equal to n so n is the number that is num that we pass over here in argument so if we get a match, let's print out a message element found at location colon and we will print out this i which is an iterator and it will give us the current position right and here we will also make temp equals to zero okay 
I'll tell you why we are using this temp. Now when we come outside the for, we will just check if temp equal equal to minus one. And here what we will do is we will simply say C out no element found. Okay. Now let's try to save this. I'll say linear search one. Okay. And uh, let's try to compile and run this. Okay. So our program is working fine. It's saying, please enter an element to search. Now we've hard coded the values of the array, which is one, 22, 34, five and seven. So let's enter seven over here and let's see if we are getting an output. If I hit enter. So there you go. You can see element found at location four. Location four is the last index value, right? So zero, one, two, three and four. Let's try to execute it one more time. Compile and run. Now this time I'm going to enter 22 just to cross check if our code is working fine. And there you go. Element found at location one. Location one is basically second position, right? So zero index over here and then one index is of 22. If you want, you can also do a plus one over here and you can say at position just save this compile and run now if i'm searching for 34 i should be getting an output of position 3 so if i say 34 hit enter element found at position 3 so it's at index position 2 but i'm adding one over here okay and we are getting a match over here so that's why we are printing the i value let's enter a wrong number Let's say it is 111. If I hit enter, no element found. So what was happening is in the code, we are passing this array, which is hard coded values and we are passing the number. So right now we passed double 11, double 11, right? So in the function, what happened in the for loop, we started from zero and we went till four in every iteration. We are checking if a of I, that is for the first time a of zero equal equal to N a of zero. We know is one, one is not equal to four times one, right? So this if block will never be executed. Even for the second iteration, the condition is checked. So basically this if block was never executed and we never made temp equals to zero. So when we come outside this for loop over here, we are simply checking if temp equals to minus one. Initially we assigned temp equals to minus one and it did not get changed because we never got inside this if block, right? So at the end also temp is equal to minus one. And that is why now we know that since this if block never got executed, the value of double one, double one that we entered is not matching anywhere in the entire array. So now that's why this if temp equal equal to minus one is true. And now we can print no element found. Okay. So this was a very simple implementation. What you can do is you can also take this array from the user, right? So if you want, you can just create this array and you can print a message. Please enter five elements of the array. Okay. Now you can use a for loop again. I'm going to copy paste this inside the for loop. What you can do is you can say C in ARR of I. So at every iteration, you take input from the user. Let's save this and let's see if this works. I'm going to say compile and run. Okay. So it's now saying, please enter five elements of the array. So I'm going to say one, 45, 54, 66, 73. If I hit enter, now it is asking, please enter an element to search. So now I have made it a little bit dynamic. However, the size is still not dynamic of the array. You can do that using dynamic memory allocation. If you don't know, do check out my videos on C++. And now I'm going to search for a particular element. Let's say 66. If I hit enter, I'm getting element found at position four and it is at position four only starting from one, two, three and four. Now index position is three. Okay. Don't forget that index always starts from zero. So yeah, this was the linear search algorithm. And if you're wondering why are we not discussing about the time and space complexity as of now, I will be covering that topic after we finish the sorting and searching algorithms. So this is searching, then we'll go to sorting algorithms and later on we will come to this time and space complexity because then you'll easily relate with these algorithms. You can understand them and then you'll realize what are those time and space complexities? So if you're watching this video in future, the entire playlist might already have those videos, have those topics. So do check the entire playlist out. I'll drop the link in the video description. 
And yeah, that's it for this video, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments how this video was. If you have any doubts on search algorithms or any other topic related to data structures and algorithms. So thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Peace.